everyone. This video is going to be over data screening. I have split up the data screening videos into um, four parts. Accuracy, missing data, outliers, and assumptions. So if you're struggling with just one part of data screening, you could just watch that one video. Um, so this video will be about accuracy. Um, I have also provided a PowerPoint so you can follow along and make any personal notes if you wish. Um, but before I jump right into accuracy, I want to first talk about why data screening is important and some of the rules that are followed when doing data screening. Um, so why do we even bother with data screening? Well, one reason is it's important to understand the data that you have, and it's also important to uh, make sure that the results that you have are appropriate. Um, also, um, you data screen to make sure your data is clean. And when I say clean, I mean making sure that there aren't any issues with your data before you start conducting your statistical analyses. Um, and with um, hypothesis or with data screening, we use a stricter criterion um, than we do with hypothesis testing. Um, and with hypothesis testing, um, to see if something is significant, it has to be p less than 0 0.05. But with data screening, we use p less than 0 0.001. There is nothing wrong with using p less than 0 0.05, um, but I have been taught we want our data to be really bad before we start changing our data. So I use p less than 0 0.001. So instead of using 5%, we use 0.1%. Um, so, for example, if a person is an outlier at 0.1%, that means they are really out there. Um, or if your data is skewed, that means the data is really negatively or um, positively skewed. Um, now, with data screening, um, you want to stick with um, a certain order, and that order goes... Um, accuracy, missing data, outliers, and then assumptions. Um, it's important to stick with that order. Um, so for, let's say, for example, you didn't stick with that order. Um, so let's say instead you start with missing data um, instead of accuracy. Um, so you get rid of people who are missing 5% or less of their data um, and um, people who are missing completely at random. Um, but then when you get to accuracy, you notice that a participant has a, let's say, a um, motivation score or an anxiety score, whatever variable you're looking at that's out of range. Um, so let's say, um, for our example, let's use motivation. So let's say they um, had a motivation score of 10, um, but the scale only allowed um, a maximum score of 8. So now you have to make that missing data and start that whole missing data step over. So you want to start with accuracy first and fix all your typos that you might have, then go on to missing data, um, then outliers, um, and then assumptions. So for this video, I am using some fake data. So in this fake study, uh, we were um, looking to see if stress and anxiety um, predicted memory. Participants took an anxiety test to assess their respective anxiety dis disposition. Um, then participants were given five minutes to read three scenarios. Next, participants took a memory test. After the memory test, they rated how stressful the memory test was. <clears throat> um, and for this fake data, um, so our independent variables would be gender, anxiety, and stress. Um, gender would be the a categorical um, variable, and then anxiety and stress would both be continuous. And then for a dependent variable, um, it would be memory, and it would also be continuous. Um, now, if you're confused with the IVs being continuous or anything about this data, don't panic. Um, if you're running a t-test, ANOVA, or whatever you're running, um, these basic rules and steps in data screening are the same still. So really just focus on if you are understanding the steps in data screening. Don't focus too much about the study because you may not have gone over having more than one IV or if, uh, if your IVs are continuous. 
Um, so in general, um, data screening for the most part has the same basic steps and rules for all analyses with a few exceptions, um, but we will get to that, um, those exceptions um, in later videos. So the first step in data screening is checking to make sure your data is accurate. And you do this by making sure your minimum and maximum scores are in range and that there are no typos. So for this study, participants are only supposed to be either a zero, so a zero would be representing females, or a one, which would be representing males. And this would be for our for gender. And for our continuous IVs, which would be um, anxiety and stress, they can only have a minimum score of one and they can only have a maximum score of eight. Um, and lastly, for our DV, which is memory, um, they can have a minimum score of zero and a maximum score of 70. So I kind of think of accuracy as just any errors that you may have in your data that you need to fix. So to um, check to see if we have any accuracy issues, we go to Analyze descriptive statistics and frequency. Um, then I move all the variables I want to check over to the right, to the variable box. And I am going to uncheck this box um, that says display frequency tables because I really don't need them. Um, Frequency tables um, are just going to give you um, how many times that score appeared or how many males and females you had. Um, but because I don't really need to look at those, um, look at how um, frequent a score appeared, um, I am going to uncheck that box. But you can look at those if you want to. Um, then I'm going to click Statistics. Um, now, since we're just looking at accuracy, all you really need to check is the minimum box and the maximum box. But I am also going to um, check the mean, median, and mode boxes um, just because. So you hit continue and then you hit OK. Now like I said before, if you're just looking at accuracy, you just need to look at these minimum maximum values right here. Um, so for gender, um, our minimum um, could be zero, nothing less. Um, and a zero would represent a female, so we're good there for our minimum. For our maximum, we can only have a maximum of one, and a one re would represent a male, so we're good there. For our other variable, anxiety, the minimum value is 4.23, and we can't, our minimum is only one, so nothing below one, so we're good there. Um, but our maximum variable is a 17, and we are only supposed to have an 8 or lower. We don't really want anything above 8, um, so that needs to be fixed. Um, and the other um, IV, stress, we look at our minimum, is a 1.79, and that is also within range um, because it is above 1. We, have the, we don't have a minimum of less than 1. Um, but our maximum variable is 15, and that is also um, out of range, so we need to fix that variable. And then our memory, our minimum, is a 24.0, is 24.04, which is fine, we just don't want a minimum under zero. And for our maximum, um, it is 61.90, <clears throat> and that is also fine because it is not over 70. Um, so um, another way though um, to check um, to see which variables need to be fixed, um, you could go to data view in SPSS, so I'm going to minimize this, and you could just click on a column or variable that you want to look at, and you would right click and hit sort descending. Now sort descending is going to give you um, all the values from the highest to the lowest. So we can see right here that we have three values 
um, that are above our maximum score of eight. Um, However, though, sometimes doing that, the computer doesn't like it. Like sometimes it just doesn't um, do it correctly. So you can also go to data, sort cases. Um, let's do stress, even though I don't really change anything. Move it over here. And now, um, just a reminder, um, some people like to move all the variables over to this box. However, you can't do that. Um, so even though it's tempting to just go ahead and move all these boxes over here to sort um, ascending or descending, um, you can't do that. Um, so I'm just going to move stress over and then um, sort descending. Minimize that. And that is going to give me all my highest, my highest numbers all to my lowest numbers. Um, however, you could also do um, ascending as well. So if you didn't want to do descending, you could do sort cases. And instead of doing um, descending, you could do ascending. And ascending is just opposite of descending. Um, it's just all your lowest scores all up to your, then your highest scores. So now, if we just want to get rid of that one score... We could just delete it. However, if you don't like messing with the maximum or the minima or the ascending, the sorting ascending and descending, there is another way that you can do this. Um, so it would be going to transform, um, recode into same variables, and now this is you want to move any variables um, that you want to fix over to the variables box. However, um, if you um, if you have more multiple variables that need fixing and have the same rules, so anxiety and stress has the same rules. They have the same rule of minimum and maximum. Um, but if you don't, if you have multiple variables that don't have the same rules, so let's say anxiety had a minimum of zero and a max of 10, and stress had a minimum of two and a max of five, then you couldn't move these over at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and move mine over because they have the same rules. But just know that if um, your different variables have different rules, you would want to do them separately. So then I'm going to do old and new values. Um, now if you had minimum problems, you would click on this and you would just give um, a score. So let's say our minimum um, was one. Um, so this is saying um, take the lowest score, everything up to one. So we could do like, I don't know, 0 0.001 and then you do system missing and then you do add but we have problems with um, our maximum scores and the maximum can only be 8 so um, this is saying um, um, sorry so you want to click the range and then value through highest and so this is saying to look for this value and anything above that value so we want to look for anything equal to or or greater than 8.01 and then we click on system missing which makes any of those values who are at 8.01 or higher missing data we add that and then we hit continue and then we hit OK and now we can see, um, not in this one, sorry. And now we can see if we look in SPSS in our data view that we have now missing data. Um, however, it, like I said, um, if you don't want to do this or mess with the sorting, um, you could just go to analyze descriptive statistics and frequencies. And everything should be the way you left it when you first ran it the first time. Just hit OK. 
And now you can see that your minimum and maximum for gender didn't change, but your maximum for anxiety is 7.96 instead of 17. And your maximum score for stress is 7.06 um, instead of 15. However, I want to make note that these are now missing data. So the values that you had over 8 got um, are now missing data. So before, you only had one missing data here. But since um, we changed, we made those maximum scores missing data, we now have four for anxiety, two for stress. And before we only had one for anxiety and zero for stress. So in my next video, I am going to cover um, missing data. <laughs>